Hello there, welcome back. This is episode two of Treehouse Knits. I am your host, Rachel, and I'm so glad that you found my channel. I had so much fun uh, hearing from a lot of you in the last week or so, and I just welcome you to my channel, and I look forward to building a community here at Treehouse Knits. Um, today is Monday, September 19th. I've had a great couple of weeks since we've last chatted. I will today cover uh, one work in progress, a couple of finished objects, and just highlight a couple of projects that I did in the past that might be um, of some inspiration to you. And then I'm going to talk about my knit circus retreat with Susan B. Anderson that happened over the weekend. Hit a couple of local yarn stores in Madison, Wisconsin. And I'll just share with you a little bit of the retreat and the one nugget of, oh, the one thing that Susan shared with us that made the whole weekend worthwhile for me. So hang in there. We are going to get this done in 30 minutes or less because I know all of you are busy and that is just the goal of this podcast is to get it done in 30 minutes or less and inspire you as well. So let's just get started. The work in progress that I wanna share with you is something that I did not knit up. A friend of mine's mother knitted up. When the shop was open, we had a knit along um, let me just backtrack a little bit. I'm coming from you. I'm coming from the state of Michigan. And in the state of Michigan, the, the state stone is the Petoskey Stone. Growing up, we would go to the beaches, mostly Lake Michigan, and I would search for Petoskey Stones and I'd never find them. Well, a couple of years ago, my husband and my two sons and uh, my parents went up north, as we do here in Michigan. And we, on the way up, my son, who's at the time was in fourth grade, was actually studying the state of Michigan and was talking about the Petoskey Stone and how cool it would be if we found one. I told him, I have searched my whole childhood and never found one, but we will look. Uh, but don't get your, don't set your sights too high. Don't get your hopes up that we're going to find one. Well, we found a whole basket of them. On that trip, it was so exciting. When I came back, I learned about an afghan that's called wool into stone. And um, the afghan was actually created by Amy Tyler, who is a Michigan-based designer. I believe she lives up in the Traverse City area. The afghan looks like this. This is what a Petoskey stone looks like. Um, it's actually fossilized coral from when the state of Michigan was actually an ocean floor, so it is super, super cool. I'll get a close-up here of what the afghan looks like, and I wish I brought a stone with me. I'm going to insert a picture of a Petoskey stone right here. Okay, so, like I said, I didn't knit this. Now, when I have something that I didn't knit and someone says, did you knit it? I usually say, I didn't knit it, but I could. <laughs> so basically what you do for this pattern is you knit a series of these cells. I guess they're not really individual stones because they all make up one stone. You make large and small ones. Uh, my friend's mother-in-law actually knit up, I bet, 30 of these. And then you crochet them together. And I'll just kind of show you where I'm at with this. Isn't it gorgeous? The yarn that I used, uh, the, the yarn that she used actually is Vista Mountaintop. And it's 50% alpaca, 50% alpaca, wool. And it's just gonna be gorgeous. My friend Kate is gonna have this probably up in their summer vacation home on Lake Michigan. So it'll really be an appropriate afghan for them. But I just wanted to share it with you. And what I'm doing is using a crochet hook I'm not really a good crocheter. I know enough to do edging and simple things, but so this is actually, this has been a lot of fun, just crocheting it together. I will have a lot of ends to weave in, but that's okay. So that is the Wool into Stone Afghan, and it's by Amy Tyler. Okay, so um, some of the things that I wanted to highlight in this episode just to hopefully inspire you uh, with some patterns out there that are great patterns. Of course, I wanted to show you another one of my Susan B. Anderson um, projects that I did. This particular project was um, the One Love 
shawl and I knit it in um, this is actually knit circus yarn and they're the folks that put on the Susan B Anderson retreat this weekend the colorway is Eowyn and this is actually a merino cashmere nylon uh, it's just a gorgeous gradient I mean just absolutely beautiful it was a joy to knit it's a really easy pattern so if you want to try for the first time some lace knitting this would be a great one it's garter stitch a simple eyelet pattern and you just and this is um, a little bit of stock net an eyelet and you just bind off loosely and it's a gorgeous shawl I can turn it around here this is Elsie my mannequin but it's just gorgeous you can see the eyelets in the back one love Susan B Anderson okay since the yarn store closed that I worked at, I got a few little items that were in the store. One of them is this, this head. My sons crack up at the mannequins in my office, but I don't care. <laughs> I like them. This happens to be one of my most favorite hats that I've ever knit up. I've actually knit two of these up. This is actually a, a hat that I found in a book, a Laura Irwin book. Laura is a designer. The only way you can get this pattern, unfortunately, is to buy the book, but fortunately the book has some other gorgeous patterns in it. This particular pattern is called the Side Slip Cloche, and again, it's by Laura Irwin. This particular yarn I used was Haiku um, Simply Natural in what color was this this was in a um oh it was called cabernet and it's in a merino alpaca silk so the merino gives it the shape and the breathability the alpaca gives it the gorgeous halo which i think you can kind of see and the silk there's just these little nubbins that you can see it's not necessarily giving it any sheen but it's just giving it a depth that's just gorgeous so I love this pattern. It's knit, without giving all the details away, you knit the band first and you make these cute little ruffles on the end. You put them together and then you pick up and knit up. The hardest thing about this pattern for people is usually picking it up, uh, picking up the stitches. But again, this was one of my favorite hats. And it's so fun to wear because your hair kind of falls underneath and it's got this cute little ruffle kind of by your ear. And I get a lot of compliments on it when I wear it. So that was the Side Slip Cloche by Laura Irwin. Um, what else do I want to show you? This particular shawl is another Susan B. Anderson shawl, one of my first shawls that I did. I um, made it out of Dunn Roving. They had a frolicking feet that was in these wild colors, and I absolutely loved it. Um, I just thought the colors were really fun, but once I knit it up, I'm not sure if I like the final result. That happens quite a bit, where you fall in love with a particular skein of yarn, and then you knit, and you fall in love with a pattern, you combine the two, it's okay. It's okay. But you'll see that uh, there are, there's a lace pattern, little bit of stockinette just kind of goes back and forth again it was an easy beginner type lace shawl um, that I think really anyone could probably knit for a first time shawl first time lace shawl but again it's a Susan B Anderson and I forget what the name of this one is I will look it up and put it, if I can figure it out, put it right down here <laughs> of what it is. But another great Susan B. Anderson shawl. All right, so the Knit Circus Retreat. What an amazing trip. My family and I drove from the Grand Rapids area to Madison and um, just had a great trip. Lots of road construction, but we dealt with it just fine and made it in time. Saturday morning, we woke up bright and early. I went with this. I went to this retreat with my mother-in-law, and we thought what we would do is hit the Knit Circus 
store before we went to the hotel where the retreat was being held. So at 8 a.m. we showed up at Knit Circus. Uh, there was a lovely lady there. I think her name was Kate. And we walked around. Uh, it's a small showroom, but there's a ton of yarn in there. And that's actually where they produce their yarn. We, um, I'll insert some pictures here of kind of what the store looked like and maybe even a video. If you don't see a picture here, I'm going to put a bunch of pictures at the end, but great time there. I had such a hard time picking out something that I would like to get. I ended up getting this really cool pair um, of skeins. This is called Greatest of Ease. It's 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 400 yards, and the colorway is called Twister Stripes. So it's a really stripey, colorful uh, yarn, and I look forward to making either some fingerless mitts or a pair of socks with this but uh, just gorgeous gorgeous yarn super soft and just super labor intensive to make when you go through the store you know their prices are a little bit higher and some people might be put off by it which I totally get although when you think about the work that was put into these you just can't find anything like this in a big box store um, and it's just it's their works of art so I will really look forward to using this in a pattern and again knit circus and greatest of ease twister stripes so then we headed to the retreat I think there were maybe 24 people at the retreat and of course Susan B Anderson is so welcoming and warm and down to earth and she had out displayed all of her um, wonderful toys that she has patterns for. The, the morning class was all about the knitted sheep. And um, I will have to show you in a future episode. I've already done the sheep. In episode one, I've showed you the color work sheep. I worked on the sheep that has the loops in it during the class. The way she structured the class was perfect. When you're in a big group of people, it's hard to see when she's demonstrating up front. So she had us break up into small groups and we'd come up one by one and she'd demonstrate. And while another group was up, you could be working on your project and you'd be coming up with some questions to ask when it was your turn. So I thought it was, a, it was just a brilliant and relaxing way to run a class. And it was a great excuse to get up and walk around. Sometimes when you're sitting in those classes for three hours, if you sit for three hours straight, you need a stretch break. So we had little stretch breaks in between. It was just fabulous. Uh, at one o'clock we broke, actually it was 12 o'clock, we broke for an hour and a half and my mother and I, mother-in-law and I uh, made sure we brought a couple of bananas and granola bars because we wanted to hit a yarn store in the Madison area called Sow's Ear. Now, Sow's Ear is in Verona, and the drive there was gorgeous. Beautiful rolling hills. It was a sunny, gorgeous day. When we got there, we discovered that it was also a coffee shop, so with wonderful baked goods in the front, and in the back area were all the yarns. The yarns were gorgeous, and you could tell it was a, a well-procured store. Uh, the owners there chose yarns that um, you don't see everywhere. I mean, they did have the basics, but they also had some special things. And a couple of the special things that I appreciated at Sow's Ear, um, the first item that I got was this yarn made by a company called Meadowcroft Dye Works, Rehabilitation for the Yarn Bereft. 
Yarn Rehab. I love that name. That just cracked me up. The yarn that I got is called Silk Traveler, and it is just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at those colors. I couldn't pass it up. The colorway, it's, it's Silk Traveler in Guatemalanus, and 100 grams, 438 yards. It's a fingering weight, and I just thought that it is just the colors are the depth. I mean, they're so saturated. It's just beautiful. 30% silk, 70% superwash merino. I don't know how I'm going to use it, but it just had to come home with me. You can see the speckled areas. Just gorgeous and oh, just so, so soft. Then from this yarn, I went to an opposite extreme, I guess. And they had Fancy Tiger Crafts Heirloom 100% American Romney. I thought this was unique for me to get because it is 100% Romney. I have never knit with Romney before, so I'm really looking forward to it. On the back of their tag, they describe a little bit of the Romney sheep, which I appreciate. Romney sheep, descendants of English medieval long wool breeds, produce an abundance of lustrous wool. This hard-working wool has a long staple length, which means it is perfect for sturdy mittens and other items that need to wear well. This heirloom wool will look great for years to come. It is a hardy, hardy wool. It's a woolly wool. I don't think I would knit it up into anything that would be touching my skin necessarily, but I think some on my hands it would be beautiful for gloves uh, i think it'd be gorgeous in a sweater i would just have to wear a shirt underneath it but it is not going to pill you can tell it's a long staple that will not pill i love the color i almost feel like it's a green that they dyed over maybe more of a brownish coat but it's just gorgeous 200 yards came on this skein and i look forward to trying out romney so that was um that was an exciting trip to sow's ear i think that store the way that they put together the cafe with the yarn area i think probably is a brilliant business model because it's hard to hard to operate a yarn store these days when you're competing with the internet um, and to put coffee and baked goods and make a beautiful coffee shop area where you can sit and knit as long as you want i guess Coffee, I believe, has a high profit, so maybe that's going to help Sow's Air succeed a little bit longer than um, some other of our yarn stores. And it's just a beautiful, it's in a beautiful old Victorian house. And I highly recommend if you're in the Madison area to head out to the suburb of Verona and check out Sow's Ear. After Sow's Ear, we drove back to our, our retreat with Susan, and the afternoon was all about shawls and she gave us a wonderful worksheet of different types of shawl constructions and we just it was a design afternoon it was a beautiful time and again she did the same process of a little bit of lecture in front of us all and then individual groups coming up to um, watch her demonstrate some of the skills for shawl design great afternoon susan was a treat again and i just had a great time you know these retreats you do learn a lot but for me, it's just taking the time to learn. I, would not, I wouldn't necessarily take time in my regular week of activities with the kids and school and work to stop and actually focus on all the different ways to design a shawl. So that was, that was a great experience. The one nugget that I think was worth the drive and the whole weekend to Madison and the cost of the retreat was Susan was showing us during the sheep session, the top of the sheep, in the design you do the kitchener and i've never i mean i had i was the kitchener kind of got me nervous at the beginning when i was a knitter but i i learned kind of a mantra in my head when i would do the kitchener stitch knit off uh, knit off uh, pearl eh. knit off pearl pearl off knit knit off pearl pearl off knit and there's always that um, beginning setup section that i'd have to always kind of look at my notes and whatnot and susan never does the setup she just goes into the kitchener without the setup and she said it works fine 
why are we all doing the setup? I don't know. So I'm going to go with Susan. If Susan doesn't do the setup, why are we? <laughs> okay, so that was my big nugget. I can't wait to just throw away that setup out of my brain. Well, the retreat ended at five and at five o'clock we, when I, back up, when I go to a new city that I've never been to or I've never explored the yarn in a city, one thing I'll do is just do a quick internet, internet search to see what yarn stores are in the area. I've found that if I do that, and if I do a search for a yarn crawl in the area or the region, that will also give me a good idea of what yarn stores are in the area. So for example, when I moved to the Grand Rapids area, I typed in Grand Rapids yarn crawl and up came the Fiber Quest yarn crawl that happens in the spring and I could see all the participating stores and that was just a great way to get them all in one place and a lot of times those sites have a map for you as well. So that was um, what I did when I went to Madison, but my methodology failed me because I was sitting next to a woman at the retreat and I just asked her, well, we, what should we do after the retreat? Do you have any yarn store in mind that you love? And she right away said a place called the Madison, what was it called, the Wisconsin? Wisconsin Craft Market. She said, now when you go there, you're gonna walk in the door and you're gonna go, really go she said because they have an amazing selection of yarns and you will be surprised so i went online on my phone and found out they were open until 5 30. class got done at around five we buzzed out of there and fortunately this store was within minutes from the retreat She's right, we walked in, the, the doors opened, it was this huge store that I kind of felt like I was walking into a Joann's or a Michael's or a Hobby Lobby kind of store. And I just saw a lot of craft supplies, but then I noticed a little yarn in the back. And the first yarn that I bumped into was Destination Yarn. Now, I have only heard about Destination Yarn through Jules of, um, Jules, the Diary of a Yarn Snob. So I had, I was, well, I've never seen this in person, so I had to check it out. And I got this cool, cool skein of hand-dyed yarn inspired by travel. It's postcard is the name of the yarn. It's fingering weight, 75% merino, 25% nylon, 463 yards, and it's called Color Run, and it is a color run. I have nothing like this in my stash, so I thought this would be really fun, and I would definitely find something cool to knit with that. So that was my first find. I thought, hmm, okay, awesome. So then I kept walking and I bumped into three Irish girls. Oh my gosh, I've never seen them in person either. The first skein I found, oh, I couldn't pass this one up. It is Adorn, it is their Adorn Lux Merino Nylon Blend and it's called Space Odyssey. The store actually had something knit up in it. It is so cool. It's mostly black, and then you have just these bits of awesome color. So I can't wait to make something with this. Another three Irish girls. Again, it's the Adorn Lux. This is called If It Ain't Baroque. <laughs> Gorgeous. Look at the golden yellows and the melon color into pink and purple. It's almost like a green, it is a green, to a black. This is gonna be something gorgeous too. So I thought, okay, yeah, there's some really cool stuff in here. Then I turned the corner. Oh my gosh, hedgehog. I have never gone to a store where they have hedgehog. And I went a little crazy. Now October is my birthday month, so this is birthday gift, money, well spent. Let me just share with you what I got. So I got some basics. When I have, I notice when I'm on Instagram or in Ravelry and I like something made with hedgehog, I find out the colorway and they say one of two things. They say that the colorway was teacup. So I got me some teacup. So excited to use that. And I got me some 
typewriter. I think that's, you can see it better like this. Two colorways that go with a lot. Then, ooh la la, Oracle. Couldn't pass Oracle up. Thought that is just gorgeous. Yellows, pinks, grays. Not a lot of this kind of colorway in my stash either. Then I thought, well, I should get something that might go. So I got this really, really bright pink that's called Sorry Not Sorry. And I thought that color would go really well with this hedgehog and it would go really well with this postcard. And it might even go really well with this Lux Adorn in Space Odyssey. So, and could even go with teacup. Anyways, I think I did a good job of picking out some yarns that I think will go nicely with some other items in my stash. And now I have a little hedgehog in my stash. So that is it for today. I had a great weekend. Obviously, lots of great yarny fun was had. And I hope that you've had a great week. And thank you so much for joining me on Treehouse Knits. You can find me as Treehouse Knits on all the social medias. I look forward to seeing you again in a week or two. Have a great week and enjoy your knitting.